and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and in this video I will be making a pocket calendar using the First Quarter Paper Sweeties Sweet Kit. In this Sweet Kit we actually got a photo play calendar kit called A Year With My Nomies. So here's a look at my pocket calendar which I took as an opportunity to practice some of my Coptic um, stitch binding. I'm really excited um, to learn this new style of binding. And so here I've already um, decorated one of my calendar spreads and I'm just poking holes through the fold or the spine of this um, signature. And I'll show more of um, the actual stitching later, but basically what I did was um, just using a piece of copy paper, cut it to the same dimensions as my calendar spread, and punched or poked some holes through it using my pokey tool. So if you have an awl or tool in one, anything that's sharp that you can use to um, poke a small hole through, because it doesn't need to be a wide hole. It just needs to be large enough to fit whatever thread you plan to use. And I'll just be using some embroidery floss. And so I'll show you more of that um, binding or stitching a little bit later in this video. This first segment here will be decorating each of the 12 monthly spreads. What I've done in advance is um, just assembled uh, these little um, spreads. So this is essentially the same dimension and size of my um, mini slimline cards. So basically folded, this is three and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I did design the calendar grid in Microsoft Word and just printed that out on copy paper. And so these are pretty small calendars. It's not really meant to be one where you're going to keep track of dates. It's more of a at a glance calendar just so that you can check to see what the day is or if you want to see what day of the week a certain date falls on. This is sort of that style or, or um, kind of calendar. I did though include at the um, back of this pocket calendar a few empty uh, sheets or pages of just plain copy paper as a place to actually take notes. And hopefully that helps to make this um, project a little bit more useful or usable. And so what I'll um, go ahead and do is decorate up each of these monthly spreads. And I'll go ahead and put this on fast speed so that um, you can just watch. It's not, I'm not doing anything too uh, complicated here, just picking and choosing my decorative elements. And then I'll rejoin you on the voiceover for when I actually start to stitch these signatures or pages together. So sit back and enjoy the decorating.
Okay, so now to the stitching, and I want to caveat everything by just saying this is the first time that I'm doing this on video, and probably only the fifth or sixth time I've done it ever, so I am not an expert. The method of stitching I'm going to attempt to do today is uh, referred to by a couple of different names. It's Coptic stitching, link chain stitching. There's a lot of different variations on how to do this as well. I'll be using some embroidery floss that I'm just running through this um, little chunk of beeswax. The wax will help to keep the thread from fraying. It'll add a little bit of strength to the thread and as well, it will uh, make it a little bit easier to glide through the holes. So I've stacked all my pages and ordered them all, and I'm starting with my last signature. So this is going to have November, December, and a couple of blank pages for notes. I started on the outside of the spine. I went to the inside at the at the far 
end, and then I took it all the way to the other far end. So I went from the bottom all the way to the top and then out the back again. So I'm on the outside and I brought in my next signature, so my next set of pages. And I'm gonna go straight up to the hole above it and I'm gonna bring my needle to the inside. And so I'll pull that through and I have way more um, thread than I actually need, but I, I figured it's better to have it be longer than too short. So um, I just went down um, from the inside, down one um, uh, hole, and I came back out to the outside, and then I'm going to go down now to that first signature, the, the December, November spread, and I'm going to go back to the inside and to the center point of my bottom most spread. So when we continue along with the stitching, um, I'm going to be sure to come up on one side of that thread that we um, initially um, created. You can see that there. I'm going to come up one side and then when I go back out to the spine on the outside, I'm going to cross over that thread. So that anchors that thread down and it helps to secure that piece of thread to the center of that signature. So we've sort of sewn over like a stitch over that. Okay, so then I am on the outside and at the bottom most signature, I'm going to go back up and into the second signature. So here you can see it's the September um, uh, and this will make it kind of easy to track where I'm at as well. So now I'm on the inside and similar, we're just going to repeat that exact same thing again. And you can take a moment to kind of tighten everything if you'd like. Um, you don't want it so tight that it's going to crush, you know, any of the papers or anything like that, but you just want it nice and taut. So again, from the inside, I'm going to go down one, they call it station, but basically the next hole. And so I'll go down one station and then bring my needle out to the outside spine. And we basically create a stitch on the inside spine there. And just like before, I'm going to flip to um, the center here, but I'm going to pop down. And you'll see this a lot. When we're on the spine, we're just going up and down. When we're inside the spine, we're going um, you know, down the length of the spine. And so on, that's one thing that might be helpful to remember. So when you're on the outside of the spine, you're going from up and down from one signature to the next. And when you're inside of a signature like we are now, you're going down the length of the spine uh, to create that stitch there. And the first stitch is a little bit different because we have that starting stitch on the last signature. This one here where we're basically kind of anchoring or sewing down that, um, that line of thread that we initially started on. But you just want to remember here, you want to come up on one side of that thread. That's why I'm always pulling it to one side and then stitch over to the other side to really anchor that down and make sure that you're pulling your thread all the way through so that it's nice and taut. Uh, not so tight that it's adding a lot of tension to those holes or widening the holes. You just want it nice and taut so that it's straight and there's not any slack. And so I'll just continue on this um, uh, doing the exact same thing. I have this last station and then um, and then we'll make this last stitch here and then I'll show you how to bring on the next um, signature. So I'm gonna, um, again, this one is a little bit unique to just the starting stretch here, but I'm gonna tie a double knot to make sure that's secured. I'm gonna flip over and bring on my next signature and from the outside, I'm gonna go in. And again, since we are um, on the inside, I stitched down the length of the spine. So now here, what we want to do, we're on the outside of our third signature. What you want to do is take your needle and just loop around the stitch that's on the spine. So you can see here, 
why I'm using this curved needle. It makes it really easy to just loop around that. So I'm not going through any holes. All I'm doing is going behind that stitch that we made from um, signature one to signature two. And that creates the loop. And that's sort of um, why I think it's called chain, uh, link chain stitching. Because when you look at the pattern that is created by uh, stitching in this way, it sort of looks like you've um, kind of created like a chain linked fence almost. So here I'll show you that again. My needle is just going beyond, around that um, the stitch that's right directly below it. And but we're going to follow the same uh, pattern where when we're on the inside, we'll be stitching uh, down the length of the spine. When we're on the outside, we're really just going up and down between signatures. Um, and so you'll you'll do this for as many signatures as you have. And this is a really great project for practicing this because it's not a lot of signatures. So I think in total there were four signatures. So um, so it's a nice quick stitch. It's um, easy to do. I only have um, I think six stations or you know holes, but it's. Um, it's enough to get some good practice, but not so much that it's going to take an incredibly long time to do. So, um, so I thought it was, it was a lot of fun. And as I mentioned, I've only done this a couple of times and there are a lot of, uh, experts here on YouTube who go through this in, in much, much more detail and have a lot of different um, twists and takes on the style of stitching. And so if you are curious, um, just search for Coptic stitching and you'll find some great other folks who um, are way better at this than I am. But uh, Sila Men is a channel that I've watched a lot and uh, Das Bookbinding is another great channel as well. So um, definitely check those out if you are interested in learning more about um, different methods of bookbinding and um, stitch binding. So I'm at the end here and basically I'm just going to loop through my um, uh, final um, stitch here and do a double knot just to secure an anchor off that. And the reason why I start at the bottom there is just so that the top is a little bit nicer because I don't have any knots um, at the top. All of the knots and everything are at the bottom. So here's a final look at um, this method of binding. It's really great because it's nice and secure. Your um, project will fold completely flat and is really um, great for journaling or art journals and things like that where you don't want that that curved spine where you've got you know spreads that are nice and flat and also the spine is really decorative too of course this is only for um, signatures so you don't really appreciate a lot of the stitch work but again it's a nice um, easy, fast project. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you want to catch new videos as I publish them, click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Thanks so much. Until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.